Okay. However, in this class, I don't have anything after this, so um, generally we'll stick around for, we at least keep the, the Zoom open for, for at least a little while to see if anybody has any questions or wants to say hello. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have much time be ahead of time. Five minutes will probably be it. Now, let's see. No, I don't want that thing. I don't know if people see my screen or not, but anyway, matrix operations, plotting. Okay, hello folks. Oh, how are you all today? I, I suppose we could share screen, share, and I could start with, um, what do I call it, homeroom thing. Maybe, I mean, you are sharing screen. Oh, no. Huh. New mysteries of the universe. Well, I can't get there. Um, well, I can't get to homeroom. So what the heck? Do you see MATLAB? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, let's continue on. Well, we, we, last time, this is the this is the right exactly where we left off last time. We were talking about plotting. Um, can't get my mind off why I can't get back to the home page. It's the first time ever I haven't been able to get back to it. New mysteries of the universe, I guess. I don't know who cares. Okay. Uh, so here's the basic plot command. If you have a bunch of X's and a bunch of Y's, you can plot them. Of course, they have to be the same length. I mean, if like right here, and let's, let's publish this one and remind ourselves where we were at. We published this on y versus x. We squared x and we plotted it. Okay. And what I was showing you too was the difference between plot. Let's say if we have. Let's say we do, we have four data points. I'll just make them like that, four data points, and we plot it. The difference between that and a smooth plot. 
Now, here's another subtlety. If you want a plot and you want another plot and you don't want the first plot to go away, see what happens is you say a plot command and then the next plot command will override it with a new one. So what you have to do is say this thing called figure. That means open a new figure. Don't get, please don't get rid of my old one. And let's see what happens. And so that's the difference when you only have a few crude data points, not near enough compared to plenty, about a hundred, to make what looks to appear, what looks to be a, a, a clean, smooth curve right there. So, um, you know, sometimes students will do this and they'll ask, you know, my graph looks like a bunch of jagged lines. This one is a bunch of jagged lines also. It's just that they're so close together, they don't look like jagged lines because there's a hundred of them. Because plotting is just connect the dots, no matter what you do with it. All right, now one more thing here. Well, lots more things. I don't have one more thing. I got a thousand more things to tell you. Any engineering plot is going to need to be labeled properly. Um, and I'm going to show you this one time. And what I got is a little a template that I, I load up where I don't have to keep doing typing this every time. So there's something called X label. This I'm going to show you one time in the, in the future. I'm just going to have it in there. And you know, if you can't. You got to figure it out on your own. X label is X. In this particular case, I don't have an application, so I don't know what to call it X. And also, since it doesn't have an application at this point, it doesn't have units. If X was seconds, you need to put the units. Okay. But anyway, yeah, Y label. And again, Y, since it's some boring thing, we don't know what it is yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, uh, instead of all that published, why don't we run this section? We can, so, I like, when we finally get done with our work, and sometimes I like to publish to see what it's looking like, especially this thing at first, to make this the heading, the major uh, title, and make everything else partitioned nicely, put double percentage plotting, and don't put anything else, just start putting other things like that. But anyway, you can also run a section if you want, just to look at that. And now you see what happened. Our plot now has an X and a Y. For a professional, for a technical paper or something, I like to make more specific. I like to make the X as big and bold, but I won't show you how to do that right now. For now, even though it's maybe not the prettiest thing, this is fine for you as students to put the X and the Y and their units if they have it. And if this is voltage versus time, you put time, probably T in seconds, V in voltage, or whatever it may be. All right, let's continue to improve on this thing. I usually, not always, but I usually like to make a grid. So let's run that one and see what it does. One section. And you can see the difference with the grid. I think that looks nicer. Also, if you want to get an idea, you know, approximately where you're at at six times six seconds or something, you can get a better idea that it's, you know, you get a better idea that it's, you know, 35 or something like that, you know. Um, what else does it need? Maybe a title. Most of them, I would say a title would be nice. By the way, this, this variable, a variable when it's in the single quotes is, is a character variable. By default, I guess things are like numbers, like real numbers in matrices. But this is a character string. Now you can do arrays of character strings too. But this means it's not a number, it's like X, you know. Um, title. is called a parabola, for lack of a better title. I, don't know, I, guess, I guess that's what it is, actually, right? It looks kind of red like something's wrong. Oh, yeah, there. Now, I, I sometimes like to intentionally put in errors, but I don't have to because I make enough on my own. But let's just get rid of that one right now. So still looks like it's going to be an error. Run section, so. There you go, parabola. Notice it puts a title, it seems to bend it in bold, at least like that, bold and so forth. So, um, what else for um, things here? Oh, all right. So what I have, and I, I'll put this on the internet, is I have a little template, I have a little plotting um, script file where all these are in there. So in the future, what I do, I have like four, five, six, seven things. 
I copy, I paste, I put them into my code and I change X to whatever it actually is and Y to whatever it actually is in the application. And so, you know, I put time, voltage, and, you know, the voltage history of, you know, whatever, the electric circuit. Uh, what else we got here for, for a figure? We could, um, let's do this. Let's start to sub-label this one. This is percentage. This is, this is figure one. This one here, is, it's a fancier one, it's figure two. This one, and this material will be there. And I'm never gonna, again, explain X label, Y label. But we'll use them every time and you will get points off if you don't use them. Um, uh, figure three is gonna be like this one. Probably. Um, tired of looking at that stupid parabola, sine of x, how about that? And this is, this is the sine of x. And what I wanted to show you here is, um, well, let's, let's run this section. Well, just the last figure we'll be in there is the sine of x. You know that one. But if you want to make your figure, your plot, um, let's see. Let's say you want to make it red, R, and dash. There is red and dashed. So you, you've got specifications here on pretty much what you want to do. Also, if you want the points to show up, or if you want it to show up as the points, you would put, uh, uh, there's little, little, little labels for points. I think, uh, what are some of them? Star and diamond and stuff like that. I think, I think this one's star. Let's try that one. So little star means put the points on here. So it's red, it's dashed, and it's got the points on it. Now, how do you remember all these? All right, like, I, I don't like my consciousness filled with red, dashed, diamond, upside down, gothic, this, that, the other thing. I like my consciousness filled with F equals MA, numerical solutions. So therefore, it's nice to have a little summary of this. And in that regard, in that regard, I can't get to the damn thing. I can't get to anything else. I'll get to over here, I guess. It's on the, it's on the um, front page, home page. Which for uh, why under God's flat earth, I can't get to it today for the first time in my life. I do not know, but whatever. I'm sure my flat earth society friends will tell me how to do it. Uh, On the front page, you will find something called commands. Okay. Um, and here, now, if you don't know how to use MATLAB, these not too good because it's just this huge list of commands. But I don't know anything about MATLAB. So, but once you start to get used to MATLAB, this is a great document because it reminds you of the stuff and rather than one huge alphabetical list, I've put it by categories, general purpose, input, output, vector, and matrix, you know, and you might want to just obviously the vector matrix array, those things are always important and like plotting commands. So I put, and I've subdivided that into various kinds. So let's look, this is a nice summary of, of and it's not all, I mean, not like us, God knows how many commands, thousands and tens of thousands, this is, I don't know, several hundred or something in here. But let's go to page eight. Let's go to page eight and look at plotting. There it is. I put basic plotting commands. The good old P-L-O-T. The title, the X label, the Y label, those kinds of things, the grid. Plot enhancement commands. 
the axe is just, I won't go over everything right now, but um, a ledge, I'll add, I actually need to do a legend very quickly today, so, you know, a subplot. But another thing, a specialized plot commands, MATLAB, of course, the bread and butter day in, day out is the PLOT. I mean, that's, that's the typical one. But that lab will do all sorts of 3D kind of plots. It will do bar plots. It will do histograms. It will do all sorts of other um, data display kind of plots, stair plots, stem plots, you know, you can look at all those things are. But one thing I really wanted to get to is this, like, here is a list and summary. I got that from Matt, Matt Labs, I think, doc thing. But here is a list of symbols, things. So, you don't have to remember those things. You can know that this document exists for you on your homepage, you click on it, and you can continue to concentrate on some of the forces, this mass times acceleration, how to set that up and how to solve that and think, but, but oh, it's supposed to be red. How do you make red? Well, you do R, I mean, I, but I want it in magenta, whatever the hell that is, M, you know. Black is a K, you know. And, and if you want the symbols, the point by point symbols, there's a point, the open thing is a circle, the X. Some of them might make sense, I just used a star. So you don't have to remember. I want a down triangle, down triangle, let's say, whatever. Um, and then here's the line types, solid, dotted, dash dotted, and dashed. Um, so I always have this at my fingertips. So if a student asks me, how do I get my color to be cyan, whatever, the, whatever, I'll just try cyan a little bit. I said, I'll pro it's probably C because it's the first letter, but look it up, I'm not sure. He said, how do, how do I go just make it black? It'll probably B, but it's not, it's K. It is B. Professor? Yes? Um, so in one of the questions it asks us to do a connected line. Does that mean we can pick any of these line designs or are you looking for a specific one? A connected line. Um, well, a so, you can ask for points only, or you can ask, this lines are connected lines. It's just some are solid, some are dashed and dotted. So but anyway, well, let's, let's go back to that. This, okay, this exists on your homepage under MATLAB, uh, what's it called, MATLAB tutorials. And I think it's the third, third thing down there, but, but they're called there. I'd even probably print out a copy of this. It's 18 pages or something, double-sided maybe. But uh, you know, I refer to this a lot, again, because I don't remember like, is it mesh Z, whatever? If I've just been using it, or I mean, I'm never gonna, I can't ever imagine getting so old and now. I can't remember P-L-O-T, okay? I don't probably need that. But I don't wanna know all this junk at the top of my thing, but I, I wanna have it there. So that's why I have, a, I have this electronic version and I have several uh, hard copies of this document, and I refer to it quite a bit, so I don't have to do this. Let's go back to our MATLAB and see if we get cyan and whatever. I don't know what the this mess with. What are we doing here? Oh, let's probably close things. Should we make this thing? I, want, I don't even know what cyan is. I want to see what it is. I don't want to put the box. Let's just take the box out there. Oh, cyan is that weak little blue thing. Well, that color sucks, you know what that. How about good old blue? Cyan, what the heck? For wimps. All right. There you go. All right, so um, those things. Um, and what, if, you, if you don't, I think if you don't say anything about the line type, it defaults to solid. Like this says that the line is blue, but you're not saying if it's dashed, which means the default is solid, which you pretty much, I mean, if you have two, if you have a single line, well, why wouldn't you make it solid? If you have two lines, you might want to make one solid, one dashed to distinguish them. You know, that's, you know, a single line. Oh, I'll just default there. Now, copy. Um, as a matter of fact, basic plot. Let, let's open up a brand new major section with the double things, so you don't have to keep looking at the little things. Figure four, and this is going to be, um, what am I going to call this? Um, um, mini plots, subplots, uh, multiple plots or something. Multiple plots. 
All right. Now, in multiple plots, let's say you have Y1. Now, does anybody know the name of the, the sine? The sine function has a very good friend. You know what his name is? The cosine. That's his. That's his bestest, bestest buddy, right? Let's say you wanted to show those two. Uh, you'd have to call them different variables, you, you, because you don't want put y1 and ha, y and have it erased as cosine. You've got to save them as different variables. But now you can plot. Let's see y y1. Now these are. Now, not just say this is like the trig now, right? Trig functions, trig functions, and whatever. Um, that's x versus y. Uh, now, what you can do is now string another set here, x and y two, and make that one in red and dashed. Let's see what we come up with. So, we're on that section. so there they are, one blue, one red, and dashed. Um, you know, I'm. I've always said, you know, I'm. You could do this thing like this. You could string a bunch of stuff together. I think like this on the same line, and some some coders do this. You know, they do that. I mean, that will work. I think. Section. See, it works, but it's just like this is just a lifestyle thing. It's hard to read. And I know those coders over there at the, what you call that place, um, Torgerson Hall, you know, seems like every time I've gone over to them over there, they're like, there's these, there's these like hippie like guys, these like long haired guys, and they're programming. Oh, wow, man, you know, yeah. Right. And they, 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 they ask, and this is the honest truth. I got really frustrated with it a couple years ago. And I got frustrated with the fact they give you commands and, and they're out of date, they don't work and stuff is not organized like I think it should be. And they asked for, um, they asked for uh, recommendations. And I recommended that the programmers smoke weed after work and not before work, well, not on the way to work. I wrote that down, I don't know, I didn't get a response for it. Like, wow, man, let's do this. Anyway, I, I, I don't like to, you know, program like, wow, man, look at all this. I don't like this. I want a new line for a new thing. I know it'll work if it's all crammed together. I just don't like it. Do it if you want. Wow, man, far out. I recommend this. It's easier to read. It's easier to um, debug. And in that regard, this works. But what you might want to do, just to get your act together, is to is the following put the first graph in the first graphing command and the second graph in the second graphing command so that you don't get mixed up you have less chance of error here's the first graph with its specs and there's the second graph with its specs and that might be a better way to do it now let's try that that's just somebody's gonna now note what happened it looks like I'm trying to plot the first thing, which is the sine, the second, the cosine, but only the second thing showed up. And that's because you said plot, and then you said plot again. So it, it erased it, got rid of it. What you have to do is there's this man called hold on. This means open up, open up a new figure and hold it. Don't go to new figures here. So, so you're going to be using the figure and the hold on command a lot to do the file, let's see what it does. Now they see they hold on. Like that. So if, if you put them in separate plotting commands, you have to use the hold on. And there we go, we got the, uh, we've got the uh, <clears throat> X versus Y, and those are the trig functions and, and things. But one other thing I need here, I'm, now there's thousands of plotting commands, and I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna show you how to make it gothic with something like that, but there is, in addition to X, X is absolutely mandatory as an engineer. You will lose points. You are not a good engineer. X and Y, probably a label. But what else is absolutely mandatory at every level of engineering when you have two curves in the same plot? 
you have to indicate to your reader which curve is which, a legend, or you have to have some kind of annotation that points sine and points to that one and cosine and points to that one. When there's more than one curve, some sort of a distinct, distinguish the curves is mandatory, just like the X and Y. So, multiple blocks. So we'll do something called legend. And let's see, our legend is, um, I'm supposed to say on and on, is, is the first one is the sine, and the second one is the cosine. I think this will work. Sine and the cosine, and I don't have a thing there. Let's try that one. There it is. So now, there you go, folks. Now, it still maybe is a bit stark, and you might want to, you know, make it prettier and stuff for presentation, but now it's an acceptable engineering graph. You have plotted two scientific, in this particular case, you've plotted two scientific things. You have labeled the X, you've labeled the Y, you've called them trig functions. And you've put a label to say that the solid blue one is the sign and whatever. So at that point, if, if this would be probably enough for the time being, um, probably a minimal and enough. I'm sure some of y'all are going to look into get into all the different thousands of graphing commands and come up with some really cool graphs. That's fine, but, but this is this is an, an absolute minimum right here. All right. Okay. And control save. I think it saves it every time I run something. Now let, let's publish the whole thing. Once in a while, this is your whole published document. Let's publish the whole thing and see what we got. Takes a while. Okay. Um, Okay, plotting, and here's the contents, basic plot and multiple plots. There is your basic plots where we showed, you know, you need more plotting points. There's the sine way, it repeated it up there. This is, I don't know, but um, here's the sine and the trig functions that came out of that one. And there we go. Plotting is weird about that. But, all right, one more thing. You can continue to hone your the quality of your graphs. Particularly, some of you all will, you know, use MATLAB, maybe your senior design project, and you want a really pretty graph with, you know, bigger, thicker labels on it. And, or you might be working for a company somewhere, and you, you're going to be give a presentation to your design team and to your bosses and stuff, and, you know, you want to make it pretty. But this is, this is fine for the time being. Another... another feature that I want to show you is sub plots. Now, um, let's see the multiple plots. Let's copy that. Let's copy all that. Okay, that will do obviously what it just did. But there's this feature called subplot, and that forms not just the same curve. There's, there's two curves. There's the x and there's the, um, the sine and the cosine. We can still work with those. Those are fine. That's our data. And we'll open a new figure, and we'll put a hold on. But there's a the feature called subplot rather than plot, okay? So, and you think of a subplot just like you think of a matrix of numbers, like a subplot that has two figures going down the page and one is a two by one subplot. And so what might be nice, if you don't want the X, the, the sine and the cosine on the same graph, I would, but um, if you want them as their own individual graphs, but you want them together because they are, they are very connected. Obviously, if you're trying to explain trigonometry to a, to a high school, I don't know when you take that in high school, but you know, you're gonna wanna take the sine, the cosine and show the differences. And you know, you're gonna wanna do all that stuff too to the high school kids. Um, so you say subplot, sub, subplot. I want a two by one. I want two rows, one column. I'm gonna assign it with a subplot one by one, the first one. I'm gonna plot that. 
copy. And let's, let's like put a space in there. Right? And the subplot two by one, the second one. You know, another way you can um, sort of see what you're doing better and, and get your, you know, make it easy to debug and see your code is, is, is blank spaces. I, I use I use blank spaces a lot to just you know, focus my attention on one little thing. Like here's subplot, the first subplot, there it is. Here's the second plot, subplot, and there's little spaces. So one lot, don't cram all your code together. Set logical sections to divide it up, and then even just uh, white space, blank spaces like this can really help you. But anyway, this should open. Let's well, let's see what it does. One section. There you go. So now you see you form the sine on its graph and the cosine on its graph. Now the um, at this point the legend is not. We'd have to adjust the legend, but you see the idea. There's subplots, and those are really useful. Notice that this X and Y stuff only kicked in on the second one, but, but you can easily copy them up into this thing too. Um, so I, I often do this. Where would I do this? I would probably put the sine cosine on the same graph, but where I do this a lot is the following. Let's say the last third of the course is differential equations, and it is. Is I'll have the top graph will be the forcing function versus time. That is, I'm pushing on a system with a certain force versus time. And the bottom graph will be the response versus time. It's nice to have them together like that. So you're going to see me using subplots um, when I think that's the best um, rendition of the physical. When I think that's the best representation of the system we're solving. I don't always use them because I sometimes don't think so. But there you go, subplot. That's a good thing. That's excellent. Okay, well, that's a beginning there. I'm, I'm gonna, whenever I can get back to the home page, I'm gonna put a, another document for you. There's 3D plotting, there's this, there's that, the other things, all sorts of stuff in addition to that, all right? Now, we need to start on, and this is a lot to throw at you, mother is, we need to start on programming. So, um, let us, um, yeah. What I want to go with first. If for a while. Let's let's open up a new so, so that intro to MATLAB had, you know, how to how to how to add one plus two and it had the help. And it had these very important matrix creating, matrix extracting, matrix manipulation commands. It is matrix laboratory. You have to know all these things. And I showed you the uh, the RAND, not only because it's a, uh, you know. It's a reasonably important command, but I wanted to show you that. I was going to show that how I, if I didn't know the RAND command, but knew I wanted a random number, how I'd go about learning how to use it. I'd look at the documentation. Now we've got plotting. Now let's open up a new script. And this one will be called um, programming. It's nice to keep things together when they belong together, but when we're starting a new kind of a topic, maybe a, a new script or a new new function. You might as well do the file save as thing right away. File save as. Notice I've got my intro to MATLAB, my plotting. This will be called programming. Programming. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Make sure I don't get confused about things. I, I, I like to clear that thing there. Warning, in, ignore extra legend entries. Oh, I was, you, know, you can figure out the plot. Okay. Um, clear. I want to clear all the variables. And then close all. Closes all the graphs in case. I don't know if I'm going to make new graphs this time. But, um, so if I just run the code now. All it did was clear the screen. You see that it cleared the workspace. That's clear all, and it closed the graphs. I you, you saw that there. I had like fifty graphs of them. No. Okay. Let's start with the the if. And this is one of the first commands I learned in. 
in um, in school there and that way back in the day. And we really honestly we talk about you know the slide rule. I used the slide rule in high school. I swear to God, when I first started college, we used punch cards. But um, I remember my first computer science teacher showed us Fortran and if this and just oh that's kind of fun that makes sense and I can do it. So what we're going to do? It. First of all, you always have this doc. If don't ever don't ever discount this if if else if else and here's the basic syntax if some expression the statements okay so so the logic is this if that thing is is true comes as is it true you do these things square x and do that really. else if that expression is true, you do these others. Else, if neither of those pan out for you, do this. So I often use if and if else, if else, else if I often use a different construct for that. Anyway, like always in MATLAB, it's got the general syntax. And if you have no idea what you're doing, this abstraction probably means nothing. So here, just in a moment, we'll do an example, but um, there it is description and there's examples and there's you know this one looks like i don't even know what this example is but it looks like a little exotic for our first example because it's just too much to look at um anyway example after example open live script more about tips and also see if you if you like the if command you might like the for the return the switch and the while hmm. Because if you're doing logical things, you know, we're going to talk about these two. So anyway, there that thing is always there, including, God bless them, examples. But let's say we have um something. Let's say we want to test a number because, like, there's a cutoff value. Like, this is a critical value, and you want to determine. You want to determine if you're above or equal to or above or below that value. That value might be a critical stress. Let's say, like, your design can handle a stress. This is probably wouldn't be the exact different order of magnitude, but your your mechanical the object that you're designing can. The materials can only handle a critical stress of five, and you want to test the the stresses that you want to stress your, your finite element analysis. You want to test stresses at some critical points in your design, because you don't want to build the thing. It comes crashing down. The company loses a lot of money. People might get hurt or seriously worse, and you lose your job. So you want to test. So let's see. Now. Let's say a value right now is, mm, I, don't, I don't know what it would be, so let's use the random. Mm, let's, see. let's use a random, as a matter of fact, we could use a random number between 0 and 10, or we could use a, a random integer between 0 and 10. Let's do that. Just I'm only doing this because it's a random integer is easier to look at than 3.4 when you know all that number right there. And I think that's the way that does that. Let me see. Copy. Go down here. Yeah, that creates a random integer between 0 and 10. So our, our design, our design code came up with a whole bunch of different values for the numbers. And our and, and we know we have to determine if we're above or below a critical design parameter in here, okay? Because we might be in trouble. So we know that's the cutoff. We know the current value is that thing, and we want to test it. So we say if our current value is uh, less than, I, you know, I haven't shown you the less than and equal to, which is a reason why um, relational operators probably should have gone first. Hmm. Well, anyway. 
This means the question less than. If the value is less than the cutoff, then put the, uh, the test equal to zero, because let's say it's less than is it means zero, else put the test one. You have to have an end on that, okay? So in English, if you were to apply this, this, this test in English, you say, look, I have a critical value. I either have to be below it or above it, it depends on your, your application, but I have a value and I need to see whether it's less than or less than this cutoff value. If it's, if it's below, I'll set my test indicator to a zero. Otherwise, I'll set my test indicator to a one. Test flag, well, test flag. So let's see what happens. One session. As a matter of fact, let's let's just publish this thing so we can read it. Okay. So the cutoff was assigned to be a five. We we said that the random number generated created a ten. Our test says that if it's above, we call it a one. So it looks like it did correctly. Let us. Do it again. Ah, we're just going to get to know it. Anyway, this time we blow. You see, it worked. And let's do it one more time. Oh, this time it came up with a nine. So you see, that's 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 the anatomy of the if statement. Just like you'd say it in English. That's what you do. Uh, okay, now, there's two other very good buddies of that. Uh, the for and the while. Time's going on. So we, we got, because see, this class ends at 11.30, so we have plenty of time here. All right. Um, or 12.30, rather. While is a con another construct. Again, doc while. Well, let's, let's do it. Doc while. You can also go to Google. I mean, you can Google these things, all the creation, but, you know, I don't, I don't Google as much as some people. Here's the while loop to repeat when condition is true. While expression. So what happens is while you look at an expression, if it's true, it continues to do these statements. If it's false, it quits. You know? Okay, an example, 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 and all sorts of stuff. Let's do an example slowly. Oh, I was thinking like, like let's say you want to determine um, whether you need to keep working in this course. Professor, we end at 12.05. Do what? We end at 12.05. 12.50? 12.05? Oh, 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 the hell? We just started. Okay. Uh, I was just kidding you. I do that. I don't know if that's When a when class ends at 12.05 and I say, now we only have till 12.30. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mess with you sometimes. Okay, I, I don't know, I was thinking like, let's say, let's say grade. Let's say your current grade is a zero because it is a, it is a zero. You haven't been graded on anything yet. So you, you, have, you didn't have homework. One, two, three, you're doing tests, your grade is a zero. But let's say you have a desired grade. Because that, that, that's your current grade is a zero. Desired grade. You know, you'd like it to be 93 or above because you'd like an A, but it's like, oh God, this stupid class. I'll, I'll, it gets to be 75, heck, I got my C, I'll go on, I'll give up. So this kind of determines whether you need to keep working. Like, 
right now you got zero, so you need more work to do. And so you want to, you want to get there. So some, somehow you got your work pattern, but while, uh, let's see, how should I say, while your grade is less than the desired grade, So, so your grade's zero, and you want to determine whether you need to work more. I mean, unless zero is fine, you need to put some more into it. And, you know, you might have higher aspirations than that, but I just remember. So, you know, while my, my, my current grade is less than the desired grade, I need to work harder, which means I need to, to do some more homework and put my grade as, do some work which ups my grade by, say, every time you do something, a, a one. Well, Every time you do a little assignment, say you get you get two more points in anything. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a good example or not, but there you go. While your grade is not good enough, keep working. You get points every time you work in here. And so let's let's run this and see what happens. It's printing out too much stuff. It makes it hard to look at. But, so let me do something here. Note, every time through this loop, it printed that thing out, which gave us way too much data to look at. Let me do this. Let me put a semicolon on that so it doesn't print out every result. But your current grade is that in desired grade. And when we're done with this, let's ask MATLAB to regurgitate to the screen. Great. All you have to do is put grade in and the answer will come out, or you could put an F, F print after to make it my current grade is, and you know, da da da. But let's, let's just see what grade ended up being. And run this thing again. Okay. There was our cutoff example. There's the wow. Mm. So you start the course having not done anything, you start with a zero. Or I guess you could say you start with 100 and lose points. I don't know. What you do. But either way, you want to make that number, and you keep at you're getting two points every time you do a little thing, and you finally end up your grade is a 76, not a 75, because every time you did something, you got two points, you bypassed it. But at this point, you've decided that uh, oh hell, I got a 76 in the course, and I got a C, so I I quit. But there's how you do. There's an example of how you do the while command. While something is true while that thing in blue is true do something you could do one or more you can do a whole bunch of things you could like you know warm up and grade and i don't do one you could do a bunch of other stuff too but i just showed you one command while do do these commands and then when finally when finally that judges false that is when you get a 76 is 76 less than 75 when you got to a 74, it said, is 74 less than 75? Yes. So it, you, you went back and you did another assignment or something to get two more points. Then is 76 less than 75? No. That's false. So quit. So that's how you got your C, of course. Very nice. Um, okay. And since we have till 1230, uh, so... I have just enough time for the four command. All right. There's all sorts of things we could do there, I guess. Um, including, since, since we've got on that, just to encourage you to keep doing that, don't just be presumptuous. One thing about computers, I mean, as long as I've been doing them, I've got, you know, okay, I do math, Mathematica a lot, MATLAB, I grew up with Fortune. One thing overall experience, I've never gotten, you know, presumptuous. That is like, I type something in, it's going to work. I have made too many errors. I've gotten too many red messages to be like that, believe me. Some students go, just gosh, you, you showed us this code and it all works beautifully and da da da. Yeah, I know, but I worked it out ahead of time. And you, you're not sitting with me in my office and all the mistakes I've made. And everything. I can't prove that to you, but take my word for it. Anyway. Four, for loop to repeat specified number of times. Like if you don't know how to use a for loop, that, that's a, a nice, concise 
that's a nice concise statement and it's true, but it's like gibberish if you don't know what it is. So here's the syntax. For an index equal values, you go on a statement, okay? And that's the anatomy, but again, if you, if you're not sure what that is, this thing is screaming out for an example. So you go down here or we'll try one. Um, let's see, I don't know, there's tons of examples for, uh, uh, So, let's say you want to create a bunch of, of uh, a vector of x and x squared. Uh, I don't know if that's the best example. Anyway, for some kind of, usually for an iteration equal to something say one two three now one to three remember what one to three does one to three let's go back here one to three goes one two three right so for i goes one two and three you're going to do something you know set x equal to i squared i guess they're we don't need the dash dash thing there. And uh, n. This is just very archaic and very simple, but we, I always start simple. I always start examples that some people consider too simple, but that's tough luck <clears throat> because I'm, I'm teaching the course and I, I've selected examples. So that could be all. Um, okay, so this means for i goes one and two and three, set x equals like one squared, two squared, this. Okay, let's see what it does. And with just that little section thing, we can, if we just have one little small thing to run, we can see what it does. And you see it put x equal to one and then four and then nine. Quite often in these commands, you probably want to store the x, like put x element i, equal to that because you normally don't like calculate all this stuff and only keep the last one you normally are doing this because you're trying to say load up a matrix with stuff although you can do vectorization or, or a bunch of stuff like that let's let's see what that will do and to get back to the clear commands let's run the whole thing and publish because i don't run i don't rerun the clear commands what i do mm. so it kept loading them up. It's probably going to give you a warning that it would be good to pre-allocate the matrix, but we'll talk about that at a different time. Let us do one more thing here. Let's see what X is. Now we can ask for it there, or another thing that's always sitting there looking at you is the workspace, which is an easier. You can ask here what X is. It's one, two, one, four, nine, or you can look directly right there, one, four, nine. See, because see what it did? It put I is one. It said X one equals to one squared. Then for two, it said x2 is two squared. So therefore, it loaded up a matrix one, four, nine. And you know, obviously, you could have done that more for five, and we can run the section. Note that now x is one, four, nine, et cetera, on, on like that. So let me just conclude today's lecture with, and we've got, we've got a lot more to talk about. I mean, I, I guess I went kind of fast here today, but got a lot more to say about programming, but the if command is its own thing. Some people looked at the while, the while and the for and said, don't they do kind of the same thing? Yes, they can be used in interchangeably, but I, what I tend to do myself is if I know for a fact that I want to go through a loop five times using the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and I'm sure of that, I use the for command. If I don't know where I want to end up, if it's an engineering design and I want to keep iterating my design until all the stress levels are below the breaking levels, I don't create a thing that's disaster. 
that I don't know how many times I'm going to go through the loop. I'm not sure whether I'm going to go through it one, two, three, a hundred times. All I know is I, I can't quit until my, um, I can't quit until my criteria is met. Therefore, I don't know I'm going to do five. And that's when I use the while, when I'm not sure how many times I got to keep judging against the criteria. At this point, you know, to quit and my grades are 50. Well, that's not good enough because I'm going to fail. So, so they can be used interchangeably, but that's the difference where I use them uh, myself. Okay, we will quit there. We will, um, next week, we've got a uh, uh, spring break day on Friday, I think, and two more days of, of programming. So we got a lot more programming and beloved examples, I think. I hope you like these simplistic examples. I know some people will be critical of them. Not me, though. And, uh, Okay, I'm going to end right here, and I'll stay on the um, Zoom lesson if anybody has some questions.